So my name is Steph Krups and I'm currently a postdoctoral research fellow of the Flemish Research Council, the FWO, uh, at Ghent University. And I did my PhD at Leuven University um, and I've been at Ghent for the past um, seven years or so. Well, most cutting edge research in my field or in the fields in which I'm active, like literary studies, cultural memory studies, post-colonial studies, um, is conducted by academics who are based in the United States. And I think one reason for that state of affairs is that the American Academy, uh, the American Academy tends to be more open to interdisciplinary research than its uh, European, or at least its continental European counterpart. Um, in Europe, um, boundaries between disciplines and even between the various national literatures uh, tend to be relatively strictly maintained, whereas uh, in the US, boundary crossing, boundary blurring um, has long been the order of the day. Um, this encourages creativity and originality in, in humanities research. Um, comparative literature departments in particular are known to foster um, innovative and, and advanced research across the various um, disciplines of the humanities. So that's why an American comparative literature department seemed like um, an ideal environment in which to um, carry out the kind of um, research that I wanted to do, which is cross-regional, interdisciplinary um, in nature. Now, why um, did I decide to go to Colombia in particular? Um, well, the institute that um, hosted me um, has many academics of international renown among its ranks whose research directly informs my own. And um, so um, I expected the um, visiting scholar experience, I expected that as a visiting scholar I would be able to uh, tap into the, the wealth of expertise that this institute has to um, offer. And um, that's an experience that I expected to be extremely beneficial to uh, my own research, my own professional development, uh, which indeed it was. So that's, you know, why um, Columbia topped my list of universities where I wanted to, um, uh, to spend a sabbatical year. That was relatively straightforward, I found. Um, so I applied for visiting scholar status to um, the director of uh, the institute that I've uh, already mentioned, the Institute for Comparative Literature and Society uh, at Columbia, whom I didn't know personally. Um, now what this involved was submitting my CV and the cover letter in which I explained uh, why I wanted to come to the uh, institute. And then I waited um, and waited and waited some more. Um, you know, it was the middle of the summer when I, when I uh, sent my email, so that probably explains why um, it took them a while to, to reply. But eventually um, I received an official letter of, of invitation and that was basically it. But of course that's you know, just the, um, the first step in the process. Um, and it, it's at that point, I mean at that point you don't have any funding yet, so you can start looking around um, for that. Another big challenge, um, especially with a city like New York, is to find um, suitable and affordable housing. And we were lucky in that department because um, a, a Fulbright alumnus and friend of mine who was a PhD student at Columbia at the time um, helped us to get Columbia housing, university housing. So we sublet um, an apartment from a Columbia professor uh, which was very nice and which was very close to campus, so in Morningside Heights. Um, and another problem that you have to, to deal with is, or another question that you have to deal with is, is what to do about your own house in Belgium. Uh, we decided to, to rent that out and, and we had to, that involves, you know, finding a, a, a tenant, um, also reading up on tenancy legislation, etc. So it's... Um, um, it's all, you know, a bit complicated and, and a bit time-consuming, um, but, you know, with hindsight it was all well worth it. One of the things that struck me is that Fulbright is a really strong brand, if, if I can put it like that, 
um, of all the, um, the grants and, and scholarships, etc., that I've ever received, I don't think I've ever been congratulated as often and by as many different people, including non-academics, as I have been on, on, on this Fulbright grant. So that was quite um, striking and I found it very amazing. And I think one way in which, um, one very concrete way in which um, Fulbright has made a difference um, to, to my career is that um, I have recently been appointed to a research professorship in the English department at Ghent University. And, you know, I'm, I don't think that would have happened if I hadn't been a Fulbright scholar at as prestigious university as Columbia. Um, I obviously can't prove this, right? Um, but I, I think it's safe to assume that my Fulbright experience played a big part in that success and that um, it favorably impressed the committee, so the University's Research Council, and that it um, gave me an edge over other candidates. So, um, of course, this is one element among other elements, but I think um, it's fair to say that I owe my appointment, at least in part, uh, to Fulbright. So, so thank you, uh, Fulbright Commission. Well, the whole year was one big highlight, really. But if I have to single out a few things, um, there would obviously be the um, vibrant intellectual life at Columbia and at other universities in New York, like um, NYU, the New School, like CUNY. Um, so I've never been to so many talks and seminars and uh, conferences before. Um, that was very enriching and, and stimulating, exciting. Um, I also got to meet lots of um, top scholars because everybody passes through uh, New York. Um, I particularly benefited from um, the university seminars on cultural memory and uh, redress at Columbia. I also um, got to present my own research in, in one of these um, seminars and I learned a great deal in um, uh, a wonderful, very high-level graduate course that I um, audited. So, um, academically speaking, that was definitely or those were definitely uh, highlights of my stay. Um, of course, there is also the incredibly busy um, cultural program in, in New York, which uh, we took full advantage of. Um, I've never been to. Um, so many amazing shows and um, exhibitions, musicals, plays, and, and what have you. Um, and so that was um, that was amazing. And um, one other thing that's nice about um, New York is that as a foreigner, you instantly feel at home there. Um, we found it to be um, a very open and very welcoming city. Um, we made new friends there and also got to see the American friends that we already had a lot more than we, we would have done normally um, because everybody likes to visit uh, New York. So um, I guess those would, would definitely be highlights uh, of my stay. Well, my first piece of advice would be to just do it if you're at all serious about your research, about your academic career, then I bet you will find um, a research stay at a top university in the US uh, extremely beneficial, right? So don't be put off by the um, application process, by other obstacles that you will encounter. Um, yes, it can all be very time consuming and a bit stressful at, at, at times, but um, it's well worth it in my experience um, anyway. Now, for some specific advice, perhaps, about the, the application process, um, one piece of advice would be to start early, um, because you need this letter of invitation to begin with, so you have to get in touch with uh, somebody at um, the um, university of your choice, and it may take them a while to, to reply, especially if, like me, you email them in the middle of the summer. Um, so that's something to, to consider. Um, also, Take your time to fill out all the, the forms, the application forms, and uh, to compile the required materials. Talk to Fulbright alumni, they've been there, they've you know, been there, done that. 
um, prepare for the interview also, so try to anticipate the questions and bear in mind that um, the people on the committee are generally not specialists in your field, so try to avoid jargon, uh, keep it simple, and I think um, that should take you a long way. Um, we had an absolutely wonderful time there. Um, in every respect, it was an incredibly enriching and, and eye-opening and um, horizon-broadening uh, experience, and, uh, and I'm very grateful to have had this opportunity. And um, I think I will always cherish uh, the memory. Um, it was a fantastic experience in every opzicht. I am very thankful to have this chance. And um, I will always remember this.